living here in the U.S. The president's expected to make the move in the form of an executive order. He's already warned he will act on his own because of congressional inaction, as he puts it, on immigration legislation. All this reportedly set to happen after Labor Day and ahead of the midterm elections, and it could set off a political firestorm. Joining us now, Ron Fournier, senior political columnist and editorial director of National Journal. So, so what's the idea here? The president would potentially issue millions of work permits to people who are already in the country illegally? Yeah, I think it's a very good possibility that up to half of the 11, 12 million people who are living in the shadows will get work permits in safe haven um, by a stroke of the president's pen. And what is that? Well, is it is it legal, first of all? You know, I, I, my, my guess is, first, I'm not a lawyer. I barely got out of college. <laughs> but my, 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 my guess is uh, uh, it, it will be challenged, and it will be up to the courts to decide whether or not it's legal. The, the executive branch has a lot more authority than we often realize as laymen. Uh, he's not the first president to use executive authority. He is pushing the boundaries um, much more than any president in modern history, except for maybe President Bush. And it will be interesting to see if the courts push back. Yeah. There are, you know, Ronald Reagan worked with Democrats in Congress to uh, reform the immigration system back in the 1980s. Right. This president has said, Congress just, you know, I can't work with them. I'm going to go my go it my own way. I mean, why not sit down and try to come up with some kind of compromise? Well, that's a good question. Look, we, we've got bad actors all around here. The, 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 the far uh, right wing of the Republican Party doesn't want to have anything to do with uh, with bringing these people out of the shadows and making America the the melting pot it has always been while securing our borders. They just won't listen to anything. The far left, um, uh, based in the Oval Office, uh, really either doesn't have the ability, I'm talking about the president, either doesn't have the ability or the willingness or both to reach across party lines and find a way to compromise with Republicans, to help Republicans find a way to get themselves out of what is really a long-term political hole. If Republicans don't get in front of this issue, really soon we might not have a Republican president again in our lifetimes. The, the, the de demography just is stacked against the Republican Party. So we have a Republican Party, for a lot of reasons, willing to bend and we unwilling to bend, and we have a Democratic Party unwilling to or unable to try to help them figure a way to bend. But And, you know, th at the end of the day, this is going to be the president's legacy. And at the end of the day, you're right. We're going to have a very, very polarized, even more polarized electric out of this. I really think this could really spiral in some ugly ways when the president does something that is this um, despised by um, half of the elector electorate. It could really take what is already a gridlocked and polarized country and make it even more so. Yeah, because, I mean, we, well, so, we, we didn't elect a king. We, we have a Congress for a reason. And, we, and didn't, if, right, we didn't elect a king, but we elected a Congress that isn't getting the job done. So we have a, a president who, in my opinion, isn't doing his job very well. We have a Congress who, in my opinion, isn't doing its job very well. And, uh, you know, except for folks on the, the right who are pretty embedded and folks on the left who are pretty embedded, the rest of the country, which is still a majority of the country, is saying, now, come on. Guys, get your act together. We, we need to have reform here. We can't have 12 million people uh, living in the shadows. We need these people to be part of our society. We need to secure our borders. So why don't you idiots there in Washington get something done? Yeah, uh, the lawsuit that they're talking about in Congress, uh, f talking about filing against the president, that involves health care and, and their belief that he yeah. can't just, you know, willy-nilly suspend the more onerous requirements of, of his own signature yeah. law <laughs> until after the election. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's a stunt. It, it's a stunt. Uh, President Bush willy-nilly um, wrote amendments to bills. They were called signing statements, but they were the executive branch writing amendments to bills without them going back to well, other Capitol presidents Hill. have done that too. Uh, exactly. And other presidents have done generally what President um, Obama has done here. I, I think you know the the. Mo What's, what, what Speaker Boehner is doing is a political stunt trying to hold off the, 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 the clamor on the far right for impeachment. And I can understand why he's doing that, but legally it's not going to have much merit. What's more likely to happen is a challenge coming from the private sector, like we saw with the Hobby Lobby decision. Um, the Hobby Lobby decision did put a break on the, 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 the president's use of executive authority and said, you know, you've gone too far, but it came not from um, one, one party 
um, creating a, an extra constitutional fight, it came from the private sector, and it's probably what has to happen here as well. But, but as you point out, this is a president who, who was swept into office in large part based on his promise to change the culture of Washington. Not in large part. That is why he was swept in the, in, in, into office. The fundamental promise of his presidency to reach across party lines and, and uh, change the culture of Washington is a lie. Has not has not happened. He has broken that promise. Now you know he can blame uh, the the Republicans quite a bit, fairly so. He can blame the structural problems with our democracy right now quite a bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's the one who uh, looked at the country, looked at the state of Washington, looked at his skills, and said, "You know what? I can fix this." And he hasn't. Yeah, uh, but if, if this well, if this uh, issuing of work permits for millions mm -hmm. of illegals, if if he does that, I mean, it's pretty hard for a court to undo it. It's pretty hard for a court, even if, they, if a court were to rule that, that it was somehow illegal, it, it's pretty hard to, to run around to those six million people or right. whatever and take those work permits back, isn't it? Right. And my point is, even if you agree with the idea that this has to be done somehow, that we do have to um, do something with these folks who are living in the shadows right now, that we can't deport them and they aren't going to self-deport, this is not the way to do it having one branch of government imposing it on another, and even broader, having one part of the electorate telling the other part of the electorate, we don't care about you, we're gonna do it anyhow, just isn't healthy for democracy. Mm -hmm. And you can blame everybody you want, but at the end of the day, we have one Speaker of the House, we have one President, and they haven't gotten it done. And so the President's gonna take this step, and it's gonna uh, divide us even further. And uh, it just, you know, it, it, it worries me. Well, really worries me. And again, I remember when the you know Reagan administration immigration reform was going to fix this problem once and for all, and here we are again, uh, a little less than 30 years but, later. Yeah, but problems never get fixed once and for all. <laughs> you know, the Reagan administration, the Congress yeah. at the time, took care of the problem for a while. And you know what? It's our generation's time, this political generation. Those folks are now gone out of Washington. They've got to fix this. They've got to address it. Instead, you have both parties uh, are more interested in proving that the other party is a little bit worse than they are, and that's that's no way to run. A, or no way to run a, a circus. Ron Fournier from the National Journal. Thanks. Thank you, sir.